My dear friends, you may ask, what can I as an individual do to uh, preserve my climate, to preserve, protect, restore my environment? Actually, there are some very simple, practical things each one of us starting today. The first is you need to understand, we all need to accept the fact and internalize the fact that our environment and us are one. Your body and the environment is completely one. It's not that your body is here and your environment is somewhere out there. Your environment is an outer reflection of what you are within. And therefore, whatever qualities of thoughts you harbor within is what your environment will project. So if we start to think of our environment as an integral part of ourselves, as we think about our hands, our feet, our eyes, then when it all comes together that we are one, us and our environment, our sense of care towards the environment changes. Why do we spend so much money on how we look, on our beauty, on our appearance, on our health? You know, we spend everything we earn to make ourselves good and better. Why are we not doing that for our environment? Why does it have to be something out there in the distance? So from now on, think about your environment with the same level of importance as you think about your face, your eyes, your appearance, your hygiene, your quality. If you care about your hygiene, why are we not caring about the hygiene of the environment? And so the first thing we need to do is to create a mindset together that there is no separation between you and your environment. We are one, and if we love ourselves, we love our environment. And as a result, we have to start inculcating that mindset. So that's the first step towards helping create this change. Then the second step, the second way in which we can help um, foster climate preservation, climate restoration, environmental preservation, is by changing our lifestyle. We, are, we live a lifestyle of very high level of material consumption. Today it is spiraling out of control. When we can do with one or two shirts, we have 20. When we can do with two pairs of shoes, we have 100. Um, our need to consume is insatiable. But as a result, this high consumption lifestyle, when we want to travel, uh, when you think about in the days when I was young, and it wasn't that long ago, when we celebrated a birthday party, um, we got a few neighborhood kids together and we celebrated. And yet today people fly from country to country across the globe to celebrate a birthday party. Yes, it's possible. And thank God we are blessed that it's possible. But we have to balance the possible with the practical and the safe. These are the three very important aspects. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. And I really admire the works of this young girl, Greta, from Sweden, where she actually has gone out and taken the bold step of refusing to fly around. And many people have followed her cause, and she is, at her tender young age, is reflective of the next generation, <clears throat> seeking to preserve her home, her environment, for her family and her future. And as a result, balancing the possible with the practical and the safe for the, what is safe for the environment is extremely important. So if we can consciously cut down consumption, cut down what is not necessary, reduce what we waste, recycle and reuse whatever we can, then I think those are practical things that we can do at the level of our families and households to effect very positive change on our environment. And remember, if you share this concept with two people every day and they share it with two others, then you can reach the entire global population of seven billion in as little as 32 days. Some mathematicians may try to prove me wrong and maybe I am, but let's say it takes six months. But think of the power of your two daily inspirations you share with people, just two, and how fast it can spread and reach all of humanity in such a short time. So I urge you, remember, 
balance the possible with the practical and what is safe for our environment.